You're watching Minnesota Vikings now. I am Tom Downey. We are 20 subs away. That is it from 7,800, 220 away from 8,000 in total. Let's make sure we get there as soon as possible since we will cover your Vikings year-round, especially as they make that playoff push. If you, want, if you want free videos, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button right now. Let's get into the latest on the Minnesota Vikings, the news, the rumors, the playoff picture, and of course the injury updates as they get ready for a potential, not potential, a win that would clinch the NFC North. First up, a lot of illness uh, going around the Vikings locker room. Uh, this is fairly common across the board here in the NFL. Uh, I will make note that in theory, these are all non-COVID illnesses. The NFL's plan at the beginning of the year was if you test positive, you're out for five days. But about 90% of the illness stuff we've seen across the NFL, if not 95 or more, has been they miss a few days and are back, but not quite the full five days. So keep that in mind. Harrison Smith, CJ Ham, Daniil Hunter, Theo Jackson, and Patrick Peterson all battling illness. The good news is, according to defensive coordinator Ed Donatel, they should all be good to go and back in time for uh, the game on Sunday. So monitor, but they, sh they should be okay. Now for the actual injuries here. here. Jonathan Bowler did not participate with a bicep. Put him in the questionable category. Garrett Bradbury should be fine. He's got a back issue, but he was limited on Wednesday. And normally when you're limited on Wednesday, it means you're just fine. Christian Darasaw, meanwhile, in concussion protocol, still limited. That can always be a little bit dicey there. I think he'll be back, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. What is concerning, speaking of the concussions, was the kill of Evans placed on IR after suffering his third concussion of the season. That's really concerning. Three concussions in, a, in less than a calendar year is not good. So I think the right move to put him on IR, frankly, I don't think you're going to see him again this year. Give him some real time to get healthy there because that's a lot of concussions and that's not good for a person. So hopefully Evans ends up being okay, but that one is a fairly big red flag. Quick note now on the Lions. Very lengthy uh, injury report. There are some illnesses going around too there. Jeff Kuda, Khalif Raymond, Nate Sudfeld, backup QB there. Uh, that did not participate. Guys, that may be a little bit worried about this week. Uh, Taylor Decker, the tackle. Elbow injury. Deshaun Elliott, the safety. Ankle. Derek Barnes, the linebacker,'s got a knee. Frank Rag now, the center, did not participate. They could be down some key starters there. And then limited was Evan Brown, a backup offensive lineman, and DeAndre Swift, who should also be just fine. But some real injuries on that front for the Detroit Lions. All right, I want you guys to predict the score for me of the Vikings-Lions game on Sunday. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if an ad break comes here on YouTube, Take advantage of it. Head down there. Let me know if you think the Vikings will upset the Lions. Lions are the betting favorites, so get those score predictions in for me right now. All right, next up on today's show, before we get to our playoff picture stuff, should Jalen Rager play more? I know there are many Vikings fans out there who would like to see that happen since, hey, Rager, first-round pick, has only six catch catches but did score and looks awesome anytime he's wearing a visor. Seriously, the, 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 the visor photos for Rager are absolute fire. They, it looks incredible. Six catches, 87 yards, one touchdown. That's a 14.5 average. K.J. Osborne, meanwhile, has... Not nearly the same level of uh, uh, more production, but of course a bigger volume. 11.4 yards per catch for KJ Osborne. 30 catches, two scores. Adam Thielen being a bit more of a, not quite what he was at his absolute peak, but Justin Jefferson is more than made up for that. The thing that Rager brings you is the big plays, right? Week 4, the touch pass touchdown against the Bears. Week 12, 25-yard catch against the Patriots. 38 yards against the Jets. Those big plays are valuable, especially when you're in that more third receiver role. Gives you the high variance of the upside that you kind of like there. Rager is explosive. We, we, we knew that coming out of TCU. You would love to have the dynamic playmaker get unlocked, but he's also sometimes negatively explosive, and that's why the Eagles were so happy to move on from Jalen Rager for so little. So we'll, we'll leave this up to you guys here. Who should get more reps at the wide receiver three spot? Type in 5 for Jalen Rager or 17 for K.J. Osborne. Let me know in the comments section. 
Speaking of numbers, how about 125 as a percentage? That's what you can get as a deposit bonus when you head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code chat125. 125% deposit bonus, least 100 bucks down to get that. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code chat125. Don't put it all on one bet. Put down 5, 10, 15 bucks at a time. That way, if you get it wrong, you're not burnt out, but you still got plenty of leftover money there. And I would bet on the Lions' money line this week because they're underdogs against the Lions. That could be a trap line of like, hmm, does Vegas know? But Minnesota only wins close games. They've been insane in that category. And money line bets as the underdog, you're, you're going to get more than what you bet once they win. So I'm putting my money on Minnesota. You guys should too with BetUS. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125. Let's look at in-depth now at the Vikings' playoff picture, and can they still get the number one seed in the division? The schedule is not that daunting. At the Lions in Week 14 against a garbage Colts team in Week 15, a struggling Giants team in Week 16, a Packers squad that may or may not still have Aaron Rodgers out there at this particular point, Week 18 against the Chicago Bears. So it is not outlandish that Minnesota could even run the table or at least finish with maybe one or two more losses as things currently sit. That does not mean, however, it is easy to get beyond their current number two, see, which they are very much tracking towards at this current moment and being able to get to where they're at. They're very, the 90% chance are going to host a wild card game. Now, let's break down how the path to the number one seed can unfold here at this moment. If the Vikings win four games and lose against the Detroit Lions, looking at 21%. If they win four games, let's be honest, if you, if you, if you lose two, you're not getting the number one seed. No chance. You lose four games, or win four games, lose to the Indianapolis Colts, 21%. Win four games, but you lose to the Giants, it's down there at 20%. If you win four games and lose only to the Green Bay Packers, it's actually 23%. So again, it's just like... Weird seating stuff, level expectations. It's it, it does the math works out. Trust me. Win four games, lose to Chicago, twenty percent. So you can do the math yourselves. It's about 22, 21 percent if you lose a game to get that number one seed. If you win out, the Vikings have around a sixty one percent chance. We're using the New York Times playoff upshot simulator there. It keeps things intriguing from that standpoint. And the reason is. Because the Eagles not only have a game lead on you right now, they have the head-to-head tiebreaker. So you can't just tie the Eagles, who already have the game lead on you. You've got to gain an extra game on top of them or get some crazy outcomes in a three-way tie, which doesn't seem very likely. So do you think the Vikings will win out? Y for yes, N for no. Make those predictions for me in the comments section. Let's say the Vikings do win out. What other game can the Eagles lose? you got to lose two of these. Two games against the Giants. They're above 500 squad fighting for their own playoff lives. A Week 16 game against the Dallas Cowboys, which also matters more on that in a moment here. And then they're probably going to beat the Bears and Saints as a bad team. So ideally, I think the outcome here is Eagles lose against the Giants. Realistic idea because ideally they just lose every game, right? You know, uh, lose one against the Giants, lose one against the Cowboys. Now the problem here is that would then put the Cowboys back in the mix for the number one seed and the NFC's title, and their schedule is also quite easy. But week 17, week 18, not easy games. So what you're hoping for is the Cowboys take down F Philadelphia. And because the Cowboys also have the head-to-head -head over you, if it comes down to it, for the number one seed, they probably have to lose at least one of those looking at week 17, week 18 games to keep them out of the, out of the, the number one seed and get the Vikings in there. Because of those head-to-head -head losses against the Cowboys and Eagles, it does complicate things from that standpoint. The best-case scenario... Vikings win out, Cowboys beat the Eagles, Eagles lose to the Giants, Cowboys lose to like Tennessee or Washington to wrap up the season, and that would put the the, Vi the Vikings in the pole position and would secure that number one seat. That's a lot of ifs. They don't really control their own destiny here, which is why I think all that stuff happening, about 40%, right? So it's, it's, it's a difference in that, six, uh, in that 61%. So what percent chance do you give the Vikings to get that number one seed as things sit 
Right now, the exact percentage, by the way, is hovering at only about 12%. What do you think it is? Sound off for me in the comment section.